another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Good morning, Clive. First one in the room um, from a very damp and dull Swindon. Yes, it's quite the same here. We had um, thunderstorms and heavy rain this morning. Um, so it's definitely sort of cleared the air a bit. Um, and it's very sort of dull and overcast. I think more's forecast for later today. But the gardens need it, and so do the reservoirs down here in the southeast. So um, it's much needed. So how is everyone else today? I see people are just joining in. Good morning, lovely Jane. Welcome. Uh, the lovely Sue should be in the room with you shortly. So if you have any questions, um, that should be my all clear from Sue. All good. Thank you, Sue. Um, so if you've got any questions, ask away. Um, good morning, Bernie, Susan, Elizabeth, Bobby. Um, yeah, welcome to another episode, 101. And um, good morning, Ken. Uh, it's lovely to have everybody's company again. I know it takes a while just for people to find us um, and join the party and pull up a chair. Um, so I do my usual bit of waffling to start with until everyone's comfortable and ready. It's slinging it down in Leicestershire. Yeah, I think most of the, the UK, I think, is, is forecast. I keep getting these weather alerts from the Met Office or saying thunder. Um, good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Jill, Deborah. Um, pouring down with rain. I think, yeah, I think today's forecast from our Groovy Tuesday friends is going to be rain or overcast. I'd be very surprised if, um, oh, there we go. Alison says it's lovely in... Comba, uh, raining in Clivero. Um, yeah, so I think it'd be a, a rarity, I think, today to have any sort of sunshine uh, during this session. Yeah, it's definitely wet and horrible down in the south. Raining in Kings Lynn, brightening up here in West Berkshire after some very welcome rain. Yes, it was definitely very welcome. The gardens definitely need it. And as I say, so do the reservoirs down here. Um, I mean, poor Bob, there was about five days of no water um, during the course of the day. Um, it only came on during the early hours of the morning. So, um, so yeah, so we had, I could hear the, the um, thunder rumbling in the distance this morning. Um, and then all of a sudden it sort of made its way over. And there was lightning and thunder and heavy rain. Um, so, um, so, yeah, good morning, Josie raining in Derbyshire but forecast rain later so yep so I think that's today's weather forecast from all our groovy friends um yeah it's definitely brought the well I say it's brought the temperature down it hasn't in here it's quite warm in here I've got the fan on under the desk um but because there's no windows in here um it gets and we're on the first floor of the office it gets quite warm. So I've had the door open all morning and the fan on to try and circulate some air. So if I slide off the chair, you know, because it's it's rather warm. So but there you go. So what's happened since we last spoke? Um, where were we? So Tuesday we were here last week. What did I have on my list on Tuesday of last week? Let's have a look. That's right, we had the, the ODS on um, Wednesday and Thursday, really popular with those lovely butterflies. Um, I opened up a competition and I'm going to announce the winner today. Lovely Sue has put all the names in a little pot. Um, loads of names in there, so I shall pour one of those out during the course of this hour. Um, last week, I say, was the 100th episode. 100 hours, who to fall? I never saw that coming when we first started Groovy Tuesday. So thank you for all your company over the past 100th episodes. I hope they continue over the next 100th and more. Um, last week we started a new project using one of the poetry plates. So this is what we were looking at um, last week. So this is the what is this life if? And I just love the the leafy frame around the outside. All of the different poetry plates um, have um, fantastic frames around them and then just enhanced with the various different verses. 
I have mine in a folder and there's all sort of different themes. You've got the, I love the shape of, of this one. Um, and then you've got some lovely sort of daisies, um, some wheat sheaf on that one. So they cover all various different um, occasions and they were um, design of the week a couple of weeks back. And I know many of you took advantage of that. See, I love this one as well. Quite funky and wild. Um, and then those little circles, great for practicing your white work in. Music one, so you've got the bar at the bottom and then you've got the top part of the frame. Really, really great designs. As I say, with the added bonus of the various different poems or verses on the inside. See, Sue's put the, the links up to the various different collections on there. So maybe you missed out on the design of the week. Um, and maybe thinking, oh, maybe I need to give a, give a look at some of those and see what's on there. So you've got a little scene in there. But if you've got the starter kit, then you can use the hills and the mountains to build your own designs in there. And then that's what I've taken out. Lovely, got a lovely rainbow there. So it really is a lovely collection of A5 plates. But this is the one that we've been looking at. Um, we're on the second week of using this one. And last week, we I took the plate exactly how it came and just traced out the frame. Okay, very simply, just using the number one tool. But I also showed you how you could shorten the frame as well because it, it works, look, so that's it, the plate itself. So you can make a small square frame quite simply, or you can use just a, a corner of it. And what you have to remember when you're working on the reverse, if you want your corner on the left of your work, then you need to trace out the right hand side. So it's all about having different choices. And I think with a plate like this, it really shows off the versatility of the design. Because when we look at the frame itself, okay, you may think, oh, it's a fairly big card, but you can turn it on its side into a landscape mode. So I thought that was the way that I was gonna go with the design. I've got a couple of pieces of artwork here. So this one here has been created by Jane Telford. So she's mixed and matched different plates. Remember that little landscape we looked at on one of the other designs? And the geese or the ducks flying in the air. And Jane's very carefully pico cut all the way around the outside. Then we have this one by Glynis. So Glynis has done it slightly different. It's the same, but different. Okay, so Glynis has also pico cut around the outside, but what she's done, she's created a panel in the middle. And looking at that, I would say she masked off that area with some low tack tape and brushed in some color to give it that green. Can you see if I hold it up? To give it that green sort of panel behind it. And then she's taken one of the, the vines and then just wrapped it around over the top. Now, if you're really up on your pico cutting, this one has been created by Chris Walker and she's pico cut both the inside and the outside. I think my pruning with my pico cutting would result in a few less leaves on there. Um, and then the final piece of artwork I've got to show with you is this one from Linda Page. So she's repeated the same process as Chris, different color frame, it, don't they look different? Even though they're exactly the same, they look different. And what Chris has done, she's enhanced the outer frame using um, one of the pattern plates. So I think it's nice to show the different versatility of the design. Okay, so that just gives you a, a few ideas on what you can do with the, the plate. But I thought what we would do is we'd use this one as I say, as a frame, and I'm gonna go in the portrait mode. Now, previously, we were looking at the lovely Jane Nesterenko rose and lattice, and we did a project with that, which resulted 
in this card here. Okay, and this is the card that we'll be giving away today once I pull a name out of the, the pot. And it will also include a £20 gift voucher. So I thought we could take that rose and add it into the left-hand part of this frame. And then we can take the poem and put the poem on the right-hand side. So combining both. So just because the verse is portrait, it will still work in a landscape mode as well. Or if you created that lovely little square for a smaller piece, it would fit perfectly within there with just a little bit of adjustment. Okay, so over the next couple of weeks, I'll show you um, how to sort of just bring it a little bit closer to go into a smaller area. So that's what we're gonna work on today. I've got lots of different things to tell you about. Um, but to start off with, just get a list of all the bits that we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna take our frame we created last week. We're gonna go and grab our rose and lattice. Now, if you've got any other flower you wish to put in there, then that's entirely fine. You can choose whatever. If maybe you've got some of Jane Nesterenko's other gorgeous flowers like the um, Agapanthus or the Dahlia, what else have we got? We've got the Agapanthus, the Dahlia, there's a rose, and there is a fourth one, which is on the tip of my tongue. And if I read, oh, a fuchsia. There we go. So you may want to choose one of those designs from your stash and pop in there. So it's all about having the choices, okay? So we're gonna need the plate, our frame. I'm gonna be using the calligraphy plate mate to hold everything in place. We're gonna go with the number one, two, three, and four tools from the starter kit. Our groovy guard, some groovy tabs, and our tumble dry sheet. So all the stuff that we use on a, a regular basis. Um, and that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna introduce this lovely rose into our design. Okay, it's because I think that would look lovely, that rose. And maybe we'll change the color when we come to do the coloring in. Okay. So, I think we, we have plenty of time just to gather our little bits and pieces together. I'll have a slurp of coffee. I'll do the draw about half past because it, it gives them um, a bit of time for people to join. Maybe they're sort of making a coffee, um, out and about doing bits and pieces. So, um, but it is, all, as always, lovely. So we've got Jenny from Australia. Good evening or morning. I'm rubbish with time differences and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so that's where we're sort of headed for this morning session. And we can see how far we get with that. Okay. So, I've got lots to tell you. So what have I got on my list? I've got upcoming TV shows. I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of the brand new, new and exclusive um, designed by the lovely Linda Williams, beavering away in the background with some gorgeous designs. Um, what else? And that's the winner of the competition. Um, oh yeah, don't forget, we've got some of our fantastic tools back in stock. Thanks to Mr. Dave. All of a sudden, it takes ages, it took ages and ages, and now all of a sudden, we're sort of, and we're releasing them gradually. So the blending pen, now I know many of you have purchased this over the last few weeks since we had this back in stock. Um, then came the One Needle Fine, that's back in stock. Um, and that's what Tina was using when she showcased her fantastic um, embroidery parchlets a few weeks back, just before the open days. Then last week we announced that the Two Needle Bold is back in stock, perfect for freestyle perforating around your designs, gives you a bit of a um, 
a bigger hole with it being bold. So if you're new to pico cutting, then bold's definitely the way to go. And then the mapping pen as well. And we'll be using the mapping pen on TV on Thursday and Friday because on Thursday sees the launch of the 12 days of Christmas on Create and Craft. So you can't have Christmas without a bit of um, Pergamano ultra-fine glitter, the mapping pen and the sticky ink. Now I have to find my pot that the lovely Pete Whitehead made for me um, to put my sticky ink in because I know from speaking to many of you, and I know Glynis herself, if I recall rightly, um, you often get carried away when you're working with your glitter and your sticky ink. And when they're on the table, they can look the same. And um, I've seen a few comments in the past where people have gone to pick up their glitter to sprinkle over, but they've actually sprinkled, or should I say poured, the sticky ink all over their artwork. Um, I can imagine what was said when that happened. Um, so I have to find my pot because I haven't used my sticky ink for a while. Um, so, um, so yeah, so heads up on that for the mapping pen, um, which is now back in stock. Okay, right, let's, should we get going? Are we ready to get in the groove? I think so. So I have my calligraphy plate mate. I'm going to take my row. So again, need to make sure I can read the word groovy the right way round. This is the rose we're going to be looking at. Now this is the front of the parchment and I want my rose to sit on the left. So when I turn it over, I need to position it on the right of my work. But then saying that, do I want it on the left or do I want it on the right? Let's have a look. So if I pop it on the, the left, there, I can see that fits just like so, but maybe it fits better on the right. What do you think? Left or right? Because you don't have to include the ribbon if you don't want to. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's have a look at the verse to see where that, see this is great because you can see through, you can have a play, um, on what side you want to for it to work. As long as you've got the plates the right way round and your parchment the right way round. So I reckon, let's have a look. See, I think that works best that way. Just like so. So, yes. So I'm gonna put it on the left of my work. I think a few, bit, Okay, so we've got some mixed reactions in the room. Um, so Josie's saying on the right, Karin's saying on the left. Um, should we have a bit of a, a, a clarity? Sue says on the right. Um, I'm just reading Clinice's comment. I've been known to knock the bottle of sticky ink over. Goes in 30 mil and comes out as a pint. Hard to clean up too. <laughs> it's very, very sticky, isn't it, Glynis? Okay, so okay, so Jane has to be different. Jane reckons in the middle. But Jane, if I pop it in the middle, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do the verse. You'll need a lot of juggling around to get the verse in. Okay, so, oh, this has started something, hasn't it? We've got left from Bernie, we've got left from Sue, right from Susan, on the left from Ken, on the right from Chris, Jenny says left, Carol P says right. <laughs> it sounds like um, Sue just said, um, Clarity Sue just said, I think the lefts have it. It sounds like one of those um, times in, in Parliament, doesn't it? The lefts have it. Um, Jay likes a challenge. Mary says on the left, I think I'm going to go on the left. That was my original thoughts. Um, but I just wanted to, to see what it would look like. And because we can play around before we decide to commit on what we're doing. So now I just need to remember, whilst I'm talking to you, that I am going to go on the left. So 
I need to position that in the right place. Now, what I'm going to do, let's have a look. So if I pop that like so, roughly about there, I'm using the edge of the plate itself to line up my parchment. And if I take my groovy tabs and just hold it in place like so. Okay, so let's pop that. Use a couple just to keep it nice and attached. And if I now take my verse, just to make sure that I've got enough space. Yes, I have. There we go. So I reckon that's going to go up there. Yes, that will work. Yeah, because we can, it's easier to jiggle the whole verse. Um, there we go. James says, how does the poem fit? The poem fits perfectly. All I'm going to do is shift that one along a little bit. Um, yes, that, that works really well. Okay. So let's give it a rejuvenation with the tumble dry sheet, like so. And I'm going to take my groovy guard. And so now we're going to start to trace out. So let me zoom in a little bit now so we can really sort of pick up the, the beauty of this rose. So I'm going to do some stretching and I've covered my piece of paper up, which tells me which way I need to go. Let me just find that out. So I need to go. After a hundred episodes, I still need to look at a piece of paper to work out how to which way to zoom in and which way to zoom out. There we go. Whee. So when I bring my hand in, I just want to make sure it doesn't go out of focus when I'm moving around. Nope, that should be fine. Okay. So don't forget, if you've got any questions, you've got the lovely design team in the room um, and Sue's there as well. Right, so where should I start? Let's start on the leaf down here because what I want to do, I want to exclude the ribbon tail on this one. So if I start here, hopefully I'll try to remember to stay away. Now, another option, I could take a piece of low tack tape and cover that up if I was worried um, about getting carried away and going over there. And I could do the same on this one. But if I do the outline of those leaves, then hopefully, he says, famous last words, I'll, it'll try and remind me to stay away from there. So let's do the stalks at the bottom. I'm still going to do this part of the ribbon just to present for the person looking at it. This ribbon could be wrapped around the back. It doesn't have to have the, the towels showing. So I'm taking the number one tool and we're just tracing out the design. Okay. And we'll put the, whoops, slow down, Mr. Church. It's definitely getting warmer in here. Slow down. Careful of the ribbon. Oh, listen to yourself. <laughs> now, I'm unsure at the moment this time whether to put the lily of the valley in or not. I'm, so I'll hold fire on that for a moment. And then I'm going to work my way up the lovely rose. So who's going for, for this design? Um, so Mary's saying, is it possible to sharpen up the design? Do you mean the design behind Mary? Because what it is, it's just being diffused by the parchment itself. Um, I mean, if I really sort of, I suppose, then that covers up the design, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, and then we're just going to follow that through. I'm not sure if that's what Mary means, or whether it's not very good 
on YouTube. I think it's, it's fine. So, I say it's only if it's the image you're thinking about, then it's because the parchment is just sort of bouncing above the design. Okay. We'll wait. Oh, forgot the middle of this leaf. See, it's quite obvious at times, isn't it, that um, you can see where you've been and the bits that you've sort of missed out on. So we're just going to follow it through. So Jill's going with the dahlia and the butterfly, or the dahlia. So yeah, I think once you have a frame, especially something as universal as this leafy frame, I think it works well with many different designs that you may already have in your stash. So I just thought this would be a perfect one to go with because I know many of you um, invested in this design. Um, for their previous sessions. Okay. So Mary's saying, sorry, the video is blurred. Um, don't know what to suggest. You could try um, closing YouTube and open it up again to see whether that makes any difference, um, Mary. That might some often help sometimes sort of like switch it off, switch it back on sort of thing, or open and close, and that can make a difference. Are you watching on a device or um, like a tablet or a phone? Sometimes it can be, sometimes what happens is that, um, depending on how, oh, okay, Lily of the Valley is going in now. Um, you know, I said I wasn't going to do the Lily of the Valley. See, it get carried away. Doesn't matter. We'll go with the flow. Um, yeah, sometimes if you're watching on a device, it adapts itself depending on the type of connection. So maybe if your Wi-Fi is not very strong, um, that it affects the um, the streaming rate. So I'm told. There we go. So we're just going to take the rows and complete the outline. So it doesn't take long. Um, so, but what this does, it sort of sets the scene, doesn't it? Um, to see what it looks like. And as I say, I'm not sure about the lily of the valley at the top. But I've put the lily of the valley in here now, so it needs some form of sort of balance, maybe. See, I got carried. I should have listened to my own advice and put a piece of um, low tack tape um, over the parts that I didn't want to trace out. Now, stay away from the lily of the valley. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, I give this advice, but I never listen to it myself. Terrible. Do as I say, not do as I do. Okay, so let's have a look at the design to see whether I feel it needs a little bit more balance in the design. What do you think? Mm. I think it does need to, I think if I decided at the outset that I wasn't going to put any of the Lily of the Valley in, then I probably would have moved the rows up slightly higher so it's more central. What do you think? But I think now, I think I do need to, to add in that Lily of the Valley to give it balance. So we can just reposition our work back in place. I'm using the guide again of where I lined it up down the side with the straight edge. But I, 
it's like you do feel it go back in okay so lily of the valley all the way and we're going to pop it behind we're not going to go through the leaf that's already there so we're going to ignore the bit that goes through see and this is what i love about the the groovy system that it gives you the versatility to be able to leave bits out or try and leave bits out unless you get carried away. Mm -hmm. It takes a, a minute or so longer. And I think whatever design you put in this frame, I think it will work. I think it's one of those sort of neutral frames. I mean, it's just a little bit more decorative than sort of like a basic square or a rectangle um, or an oval. And it adds that little bit of um, design element to it, doesn't it? So Lily of the Valley all the way. Because I didn't listen to my advice. Okay. So now we have our rows in place. Get rid of the groovy tab. There we go. Lovely. What do you think? I think that works really well. And definitely needed the lily of the valley to give it that balance. Don't you agree? I think so. Ooh, it's definitely warm in here. <laughs> Let's have a hot drink to make it warmer. Okay, so I said about half past what we'll do, we'll do the, um, the draw for the competition. So last week, if you tuned in for the, let's zoom out a little bit now. Oops. Zoom out, I'm gonna go that way. Nice and slowly. Okay. So last week, I asked you to either email or send me a message on Messenger or on to Clarity Stamp Messenger and we'd put all the names into a pot. So the lovely Sue chopped them all up for me, okay, and put them in the pot. So the lucky winner is going to receive this card and a 20 pound gift voucher, okay. So let me do this, I don't wanna do it on, so what I'm gonna do now, put my hand in, give it a good mix up. Clarity Sue, how many entries did we have? I know we had quite a few. Right, okay, I've got to pick one. I know it's so difficult. Oh, right, here we go. One, I think it's one coming out. One is coming out. And the winner is, we had 46 entries. Thank you very much. Ready for the winner? And the winner is Kaz Gill. Congratulations, Kaz. Um, we'll be, get, I'm sure we've already got your tea house. Um, so, um, so you'll be, win I will be sending you this card and we'll also be including a 20 pounds gift voucher in there. Um, and uh, we did get your, I did get your message and it was included. I gave it to Sue yesterday when I read your message on my messenger. Um, so, um, so it was included that your name would have been in here, um, because Sue chopped all the names up, um, and included them. So congratulations to the lovely Kaz. This will be winging its way to you. We'll get this out to you today and, um, hope you like it and, um, enjoy spending your 20 pound gift voucher. So I'm just going to pop that in there and we'll pop that to one side. So thank you to Sue for sorting all that out for me and thank you everyone for um 
for taking part. It's great to have the support. It really, really is. So let's pop that card somewhere nice and safe. Okay. So we've done that. Congratulations to Kaz. Um, should we have a sneaky peek at the new and exclusive that's launching this week? So we've got busy three days at TV this week. Um, on Thursday, we've got... So on Thursday, sees the launch of 12 Days of Christmas on Create and Craft. Um, they always do Christmas, the 12 Days of Christmas in June. Um, despite the lovely hot or wet weather, um, it always seems to prove very popular. So this week on Thursday at 4 p.m. sees the launch of a brand new, new and exclusive designed by the lovely Linda Williams. Now, many of you may remember from last year, um, Linda's Christmas Treasures collection. Um, there was five different sets in the collection and it was like a series. And every month over the five months, we launched a different set. Um, now this set for this year um, is a series of layering plates designed by Linda. And so the first one with it being Christmas is Christmas themed. And then each of the following months have different themes to them. But I'm not going to reveal what they are because you need to um, check them out in a month's time. So it's at four o'clock and eight o'clock on Create and Craft on Thursday, and then an hour at 8 a.m. for you early birds on Friday morning. And then once that show's done, I'll then be heading back to Clarity Towers. Now, because it is a new exclusive, we make it, this is the only um, show when we do um, Create and Craft where we make it new and exclusive just for the TV. So it won't be available on our website until 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, okay? So should we have a sneaky peek at what the designs look like? Okay, let's have a look. So, right, okay, let's bring in, oh, I don't know where I'm gonna start with, oh, which one? Let's start off with this one. So this is an, oh, I need to zoom out. These are A4 square plates. Okay, let me zoom out this way. So this is the lovely post box. So what you'll see is that there's a theme um, throughout the whole series. Um, each of them will have a focal point, the focal image in the middle. And then you have these lovely um, decorative elements and the layering. So you've got a smaller frame, but you've also got this frame, then you've got the outer frame, and there's so much you can do with them. When I show you some um, stuff that the design stuff, when I show you some artwork that the design team have created, it's absolutely stunning. Okay. Then the next one, look at this. This is the... Um, Silent Night plate. So you've got a circle around the outside, and then you've got a square frame, then you've got that square frame, then you've got that circle frame, then you've got that square frame. So you can use the plate exactly as it comes, or you can use elements of it. And in each of the collections every month, there's going to be a dotted cross stitch effect design. Look at this. The dotted designs are proving really, really prop, popular. popular. Um, you may recall those lovely frames um, that we launched with the uh, Bijou Floral Alphabet. Well, it's along the same concept where these are just embossed dots that you just press into. Um, and again, you've got the various different layers on them. Okay, look at this. These, oh, Okay, so you've got three of the large A4 square plates, and then each set will come with an A5 square plate. This is what we call a companion plate. So this is the, the holly and the ivy companion plate. So you've got a lovely first, you've got some bows. Look, I love this. And when I show you the artwork, um, a number of our design team have turned them into a Christmas tree. Look, if I just tilt it slightly that way, is it a Christmas tree? Of course you can. Okay, are you ready for some artwork? 
So the first piece I'm going to show you um, takes the plate exactly as it comes. And this has been designed by Jill Ascom, who's one of our newest design team members. So what Jill's done, she's taken the frame on a piece of colored parchment and then pico cut on the inside and the outside and then layered it up, okay? Then we've got a piece using the same plate designed. This one's been created by the lovely Linda Williams herself. Look at that. Changing the image in the middle very simply. Merry Christmas. And I believe that's taken from one of the, um, that could be taken from the nested square extension plate or Jane's frame, the Merry Christmas. But look at those lovely Christmas roses. The, oh, okay. Now this one combines the post box with the silent night plate. So another piece created by Linda Williams. So we've got the center point is the post box and then the circular frame um, from the silent night plate, the one that has the, the lovely church scene in the middle. Then this one is, let me just check, I've got it on the right list, yep. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one is by Julie Campbell. So you've got the larger frame and then she's pico cut um, a large circle on clear parchment, but she's then combined it with the dotted cross stitch. Okay, and put that in the middle. So you can see the versatility on the design on how you can mix and match um, the various different elements of them. Then the next piece is by Francis Knott. Look at that. The, the overhead, can you see all that glistening? Look at that. So it's combining the first plate frame and then the center of the silent night. Then we have a piece by Jane Telford and Jane has taken the dotted cross stitch smaller frame and wrapped it around this lovely church scene. It's that real essence of sort of silent night, Christmas Eve, midnight mass, um, or even just a winter wedding. That'd be perfect for a winter wedding. Um, the next piece is, there's so much to show you. It was so hard just to pick a few, just to showcase the designs. This one is from Julie Campbell. Look at that dotted cross stitch effect around the outside. And then mixing it with the silent night church Christmas tree. I mean, you could exclude the Christmas tree and just have the church and the bridge. It's entirely up to you. This one here from the lovely Carol Baker. So Carol's done this as a separate frame in different color. The dotted, I mean, the, let me bring this up so you can, the dots on these, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And we've got two more to show you. So we've got another piece from Francis. So Francis has done it in the traditional style. But I love what she's done with this frame. She's pico cut around all of it to create that sort of snowflakes um, star effect. Okay, it's like so. And then finally, this one from Carol Pankstello. She's turned it into a Christmas tree. Isn't that great? The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. I said that completely wrong, I'm rubbish. I need to practice on how that sounds. I really do. <laughs> so there is a sneaky peek of the new and exclusive launching on Thursday at 4 p.m. on Create and Craft then back on at eight o'clock and then 8 a.m. on Friday morning. Then Tina will be um, on Saturday and she's taking the, the reins to the sleigh from Barbara's Towards the Night collection. So she's gonna put those through their paces at one o'clock and five o'clock on Saturday. So it's three lovely hours 
Um, maybe it'll put you into the mood of Christmas with the hot weather. Maybe it'll sort of psychologically sort of cool you down. So, um, so yeah, so it's some free, some, uh, three days of, of TV to keep you occupied. Okay, right, so where were we with that lovely design? So here we now have, let's go back. So to our piece of artwork. Right, okay. There we go, so lovely clarity suits, put some information up for you about the different times. But don't forget, if you haven't already, sign up to our newsletter um, or emails. Um, we always let you know upcoming TV shows with the dates and the times. Um, we notify you about special offers, designs of the week, um, Wigig, when it's gone, it's gone, half price highlights, um, about the shack, um, any changes for the shack or Groovy Tuesday. Um, on Sundays, we do a fantastic on the Clarity Matters blog, a step by step by the design team. Um, so Gracie looks after the um, Clarity Matters blog on a Saturday it's at 8 o'clock. It's a Saturday share. And then on Sunday, there's always a step-by-step -step tutorial. So um, make sure if you haven't already, just sign up to the newsletter. Um, and then you'll be kept up to date with all things Clarity. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Sue's popped a link up there. So just click the link and then follow it through. Okay. So let's go back to this piece of artwork now. And uh, let's have a look at introducing our verse. Okay. So let's put the poop, let's pop the plate even into play. Okay. And now what we're going to do is decide where we're going to start. Because if you look, it overlaps the leaves. So I know I just need to adjust it. But I also need to get that in as well. So let's start at the top. Okay. And what I'm doing here, see this outer part of the frame here, I'm going to line it up with the straight line on this frame to give me sort of a guide to make sure that I'm not going on one key. So if I move that up, until I'm happy with my positioning. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my groovy tabs and hold it in place like so. Is it straight? Just try, it's not straight. And the number is I know it's not straight because of the space here to here. So what it means, I need to just swing that round a little bit just like so. I'm only going to put two groovy tabs on. So let's do the first line first. Number one tool. And then we're just going to trace out the verse. Now if you have any of the other poetry plates, you can use one of those if it fits. Okay. And I don't need to worry about my spelling because it's all ready done for me. Okay, just like so. Oh, we've got lovely Barb in the room. Good morning, Barb. This artwork is absolutely stunning. Um, check out Barb's blog um, over the next couple of days because she'll be showcasing all of the artwork from the design team if you want to see it a little bit more up close and personal. Um, I mean, I, we do our best to showcase it on TV as much as possible because the design team do a fantastic um, job with all that to make it easier for us when we go on TV. So um, I'm really looking forward to the shows coming up on Thursday and Friday. But you can see how easy it is. Um, just, to, I haven't got to worry about spacing. I haven't got to worry about um, getting it right. As long as it fits within the area I want it to go, then it's great. And then we've got the little comma. 
like so. Now, when I come down here, I can see that it fits just right, but I'm going to have to move it slightly when it gets to these areas here. But we can do that, can't we? See, if this was a complete stamp, then you would be restricted. I would have had to have left that leaf out, wouldn't I? Or I would have had to put the sentiment in first and then put that around it if I wanted to. So what we're gonna do now is move down to the next line, like so. There we go. And it doesn't take long to do it. I'm using the number one tool to trace out the, the words or the letters. And it gives it that lovely crisp sharpness. sharpness. Okay, so we're still fine on this one here, like so. And then, there we go. We're just going to follow it through. As I say, maybe you want to personalize it, you could take um, the letters from the plate mate and personalize it. You could, um, this, we have a number of plates that have various different sentiments on them already for you. Um, the, um, the sentiment borders have different relatives on, um, or you've got ones that, the lovely one is a nice one, the one that comes with the entwined reef collection. There's some, it's in Barb's handwriting. Um, that would work perfectly within this universal frame. Okay, so let's have a look. So we're still, see I didn't check, I just moved down because I'm talking too much. So I reckon, we'll, yeah, we'll get this bit done in time. And then next week, we can have a look at introducing some color again. Maybe a little bit of white work. Um, so um, yeah, lots to keep you company and occupied with. So we're going to complete this verse like so. It doesn't take long to do, does it? It really doesn't. Now here, my N is just touching the leaf. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can decide, I think I'm gonna put that N in because the line will be more prominent to the tip of the leaf. So it's really not gonna have any effect on this element here. Really, it doesn't matter if you jump out not going to ruin your work, masterpiece. There we go. So I don't even need to know what it says backwards. Um, because the work's been done for me. I would say I haven't got to worry about the spacing. See, look, my voice is slow down there. Right, okay, so now I need to slide it over this way a little bit. And it's just a fraction, just to to pick up that um, comma. So all I'm gonna do now is just slide it over the fraction and I'm using the guide to the edge of the plate to make sure my parchment is still straight. Now I reckon if I go over a little bit more, I won't have to move it again. I reckon just about there. There we go. And I, now means I haven't got to move it any further to complete the sentiment. And the groovy guard definitely makes a difference. My hands in this room, <laughs> it's, um, it's very sticky in here and I haven't been anywhere near the sticky ink yet. Um, gonna keep that till Thursday. So, but I do need to find my lovely little pot from Peter, because it's been a while since I got sticky with the sticky ink. And I'll try my best um, not to throw my sticky ink over my artwork 
on um, on TV. But you know what live TV is like. You know, it'll be fine. I can't believe where this time disappears and where it goes to. I really can't. Um, sometimes an hour just isn't enough. That's what we're doing now. It's the same when we do TV. An hour, you think, oh, an hour's a long time. But it's not really. Um, because by the time we showcase the product, we show off the um, um, the artwork from the design team. And I have to say, for this particular show, all the um, artwork we'll be showcasing will be um, by Linda herself, and the lovely Lynn Jackson has staged everything up. Um, so it gave Jane and Glynis and Josie a bit of a break for this one. So, um, so thank you indeed to Linda and Lynn Jackson for their amazing work. And I think we're on the last word. Here we go. I'm surprised myself that we've got as far as this. Normally I, I have a plan in my head, but I didn't verbalize it, did I? Did I? So, um, right, should we turn it over for the big reveal? Ready? Let's move the plate out of the way. Lovely. So nobody would know that we tweaked these last three lines and brought them over to the left. It looks as if that was the way it was meant to be. So, yeah, I really like that. I really like that. And so I know many of you at home will be using different flowers um, in there. Or maybe, as I say, we I showed you last week how you could make a smaller frame from the same plate so that verse would sit perfectly within there as well if you wanted to sort of keep it small um so um so yeah i love it see sometimes looking at what you have in your stash and maybe many of you would already have um these plates in your collection and we're just revisiting just to show different things that you can do with it. Because sometimes we often look at a plate and think, okay, that's the way it's designed, that's the way we're gonna use it. But when you start to combine it, I mean, we've only used two plates. We've used the rows that we've been working on previously, um, and this one here, the frame, to combine both together. So just because the frame has that lovely poem in the middle, doesn't mean that that's the way it has to stay experiment have a play lay plates on top of one another to see what you think that they might look like um or do the frame like i did and then lay the plates on to see whether the rows look better on the left or whether the rows look better on the right and then commit to what you want to do um say in hindsight maybe if i'd thought about it before i wouldn't have put this leaf in but you know what it was adaptable I just adjusted the sentiment slightly to the left and nobody's none the wiser, whether it, that's the way it was meant to be. Um, so, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the um, sneaky peek of the new and exclusive launching on Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, so Thursday, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., Friday, 8 a.m., then Saturday, Tina's on at one o'clock and five o'clock. Why I went from p.m. to o'clock, I don't know. One p.m. and five p.m. Then we're back in the shack with Barb on Monday and to continue those lovely Japanese butterflies and flowers, the sort of lotus or the water lilies, absolutely beautiful. Um, and then I'll be back with you on Tuesday for another Groovy Tuesday. So thank you to Sue for your help. 
thank you to all the lovely design team members in the room as well uh, for your help as always. Um, so it depends on the weather. Um, maybe you need to go paddling in the puddles um, now with all that rain. Um, but take it easy and I'll see you again next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.